Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes, and I love MMORPGs. I think they're one of the greatest gaming achievements in the last 20 years, and will continue to be a part of the gaming landscape for the rest of time. The ability to exist within and explore a consistent virtual world with millions of other people is a monumental achievement. And now we have more MMORPGs than ever, ranging from classical fantasy to interstellar sci-fi, servers for every part of the globe, games changed into multiple languages. With all this advancement, you'd assume MMORPGs are going from strength to strength, only improving. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. I've played MMORPGs my entire life. I've adventured through RuneScape, EverQuest, World of Warcraft, Runes of Magic, Terra, Neverwinter, Guild Wars 1 and 2, Aeon, Skyforge, and many more. I've seen years of advancement and gameplay changes that developers hyped and customers met with indifference. I've seen player bases rise to the incredible heights of millions of accounts and hundreds of thousands of active players and fall to the pitiful maintenance mode every dying MMORPG must go through before being shut down for good. But how has this happened? How can a genre so worldwide rise to such heights and then fall so intensely from grace? What is ruining modern MMORPGs. Well, after almost 20 years of playing them, I think I've finally found the answer. Let me explain. I started off by scouring Reddit, gaming forums, and asking my friends or Discord chat what they remembered loving about MMORPGs, what their favourite memories were, those never-to-be-forgotten adventures they'd warmly reminisce about. And even though I received hundreds of different stories, they all had several core themes. Let's take some examples and see if you can work it out. These extracts are from other MMORPG fans reliving their favourite memories. 2007 was peak RuneScape for me. Me and my mates used to hop in this Skype chat we had every night after school and all do our own thing. Some of us fished, some trained Slayer, and some just stood around trying to merchant and sell things. But every night before we logged off, we'd meet up and go kill a boss for an hour or two. It wasn't great money, because there were so many of us the loot split was awful, but we had the best time together. My guildies and I would stand around in the starting area and welcome any new account we saw being made, give them some basic items and then follow them around for a while, making sure they were okay. Most of them would join our guild afterwards and loved how welcome we made them feel. We knew the tutorial was rubbish, so we had someone go and help them. I'd stand in the trading tunnel in EverQuest for hours flipping items, buying low one side and selling high the other. You'd spot other people doing exactly the same thing and end up with an intense rivalry, always trying to type immediately after them so it pushed their chat up off the screen first. Back in Neverwinter, if you wanted to do a dungeon with a friend who wasn't the same level as you, you had to actually travel to that dungeon within the world. No group finder. So we'd load up on supplies in the main hub city of Protector's Enclave and ride all the way to wherever we decided to go to. Sometimes lower levels would aggro the mobs in the higher level maps and we'd have to waste our supplies just trying to keep them alive. But damn, it was good fun. I remember trying to get into Runes of Magic years ago. The game had its issues, but the main problem was I couldn't find any advice online about how to do anything, or what certain NPCs or attacks even did. So I spent hours figuring it out and writing stuff down. I ended up with a little notebook next to my PC to check on whenever I couldn't remember, and ended up telling other players everything that I'd learned. I have hundreds of stories like this from other players, but after reading them and trying to find the links, I realised something. There are two things MMORPGs did that made them great, and it's those two things that have been removed or reduced in a majority of modern games. Those two things are 
One, they were not convenient. Convenience sounds like a good thing, and indeed, in many ways, it is a positive trait for something to have. But making something convenient isn't always an improvement. Let me give you an example to explain this. Imagine, at the top of a mountain, across a dangerous valley, hidden at the end of a raging river, only shown on a secret map held by a travelling trickster, sits a wise old sage, Noah of many things, and this sage will share his knowledge with you if you can find the trickster, take the map, sail the river, traverse the valley, climb the mountain, and ask him a question. Many try, few succeed. And after years and years, the legend of the sage grows and grows until everyone has heard of him, but few have ever seen him. Now imagine if the same sage lived in the middle of a major city, and there were tour groups taken to him every hour. The second example has exactly the same end point as the first, talking to the sage, but the journey to make it happen. Has been made much more convenient. Surely, this is a good thing, right? Well, yes and no. It's good because it makes the end goal easier to achieve, and it's bad because the end goal of anything is not where the experience and the adventure and the mystery actually lies. It is the journey to the end goal, the seeking of the map. The sailing of the river, the crossing of the valley, and the climbing of the mountain, the difficulty present in achieving an audience with the sage was precisely what made the audience with him so damn impressive. It was the reward for the completion of a task, and reward is directly and inversely proportional to the difficulty of the task required for that reward. Convenience. Makes achievements both easier to reach and meaningless to get. Every example I'd read out above lists a part of the game that was not convenient: the player drop splits not being personal, the in-game tutorial being useless, manual trading due to the lack of an auction house, being killed by mobs while travelling, or the lack of an up-to-date wiki. Convenience. Kills adventure. The easier you make something to achieve, the less impact and personal pride that achievement will carry. Think about this in your own life. I'm sure you've done something in your life the hard way, the way others told you, "Don't do that. Do this instead. It's easier," and you weren't quite able to explain to them, "It's not about it being convenient. It's about being an achievement." That's point one. Here's point two. Two, they facilitated and rewarded player interaction. This may be a more complex point, so let me explain and bear with me. MMORPGs are not good games in the traditional sense. Now, before you get angry, hear me out. If I bought a single-player game for full price and it contained A thousand identical fetch quests. I'd feel cheated. I'd think the devs were lazy, and using cut and paste for everything. So why do I allow this in MMORPGs? Well, it's because first and foremost, MMORPGs aren't really games in the traditional sense. They're multiplayer experience facilitators. This is simply a fancy way of saying they give multiple players the ability and the tools they need. To interact with other players if they want to, want to chat to someone, you can. Duel them, trade them, add them as a friend, all fine. Meet up with a huge group and go destroy a boss enemy together. Go for it. MMORPGs give you the ability to share an adventure with other people, and here's the important part: they rewarded you if you did. Grouping up is often faster experience. Boss monsters require a team to kill. In-game professions cannot all be mastered by one person, so a team is needed to gather rare materials if you need to craft things. Now, however, many players are going through the game solo. While this isn't 
a bad thing by itself, I've personally enjoyed a few hours solo in Guild Wars 2. It does mean you're removing the multiplayer aspect of the game and focusing on the gameplay part, which was never, ever the main focus of the developers. A single-player game like The Witcher 3 or Deus Ex can focus on personal story, character interaction, world choices, and make you feel important, but the strength of an MMORPG, the single defining factor of that genre that makes it stand head and shoulders above other games, is other players. So developers will always place the majority of resources into making the multiplayer experience as great as possible. As an experiment, I played through multiple MMORPGs to check, could I reach the final level, the final boss, or the final dungeon, or experience all this game has, without talking to another real player? And unfortunately, the answer was yes. Looking for group tools removed the need for me to actually look for a group. Dungeon guides removed the need for me to ask and learn about the dungeon and marketplaces or auction houses made it possible to buy and sell my wares without ever trading anything other than an NPC. In almost every example of a favourite MMORPG memory people sent me, people and the relationships they formed, be that friends, enemies, rivals, or in some rare cases becoming real-life partners, were always present. People and players make MMORPGs what they truly are, and if you remove the multiplayer interaction aspect, you're often left with just a big world full of lonely people. So what do we do with this information? How does it matter? Well, here's what I truly believe will happen until MMORPG designers change. Players will demand convenience. They will demand things in the game become more obvious, easier to achieve, and more streamlined. The developers will supply these demands and introduce things like looking for group, teleport directly to dungeons or other players, auction houses to sell your wares, no penalty for death, and personal loot for everyone. Players will enjoy the convenience for a short while before realising that the magic the spark of adventure that was gained through overcoming the adversity of the lack of convenience has gone. Then they'll leave and forever roam the world looking for another MMORPG to recapture the feeling of magic from the first, never realising the feeling of magic wasn't ever coming from the game. It was the feeling you got for overcoming obstacles and achieving something in the face of adversity. Players will then try new games, rushing through them and not talking to others in a vain quest to recapture the feeling of true adventure. They'll avoid chatting to others because that's an experience waste. They won't join a guild because they want to play solo, and then after getting maybe halfway to the level cap, they'll quit, declaring the game boring, bad, pay to win, too hard or too easy. They expect the game to give them the fun and the adventure and the magic. They will never stop and realise they used the game to find fun the first time. The cycle will then continue forever. How do we fix this? I'm going to tell you how we fix this and you're not going to like it. There are three steps we need to follow to bring back the true magic of MMORPGs, and in order they are. 1. Realise and understand that every single MMORPG sucks in a different way. Yes, every single one. MMORPGs all have redeeming features, but they also all have terrible aspects. Combat may be great in Neverwinter, but beyond that, the game has virtually nothing. EverQuest has a deep character stats menu, but good god the gameplay is clunky. Guild Wars 2 looks gorgeous and has fantastic jumping puzzles, but I hope you like using attacks linked solely to your weapon. 
every MMORPG sucks in its own special way. There is no greatest game. There is no MMO that will unite us all. So please, as a player, stop looking for it. Pick one you can stand and give it a fair try. Two, remove convenience. Quality of life upgrades are fine. I understand reducing two button clicks to one button click isn't going to break the community, but anything that decreases required gameplay time or removes the challenge of achieving a certain goal, be that selling an item or completing a dungeon, has got to go. Auction houses shouldn't be removed entirely, but should either be in a hard-to-reach place, extremely dangerous, or place very heavy taxes onto all items being sold to vastly reduce your profit and give an incentive to go back to player-to-player -player trading. Looking for group tools shouldn't teleport you or your group directly to the dungeon entrance. Tutorials should give you the basics that you need to survive and then leave enough mystery for you have to ask someone or research it yourself. You have to say, what is this thing and what does it do? But if anything removes adventure and replaces it with convenience, it has no place in an adventure game. And finally, this one's on you. Number three talk to other people. You are not the only person who wishes for MMORPGs to regain the spark of magic they once had. I'm willing to bet the majority of players want that feeling back, but there's a horrible truth we have to face up to first. That magical feeling of adventure, camaraderie and fellowship comes from forming bonds with other people, and doing that takes time, which is both effort and an experience point waste. It is not efficient. You have to make the choice to stop going after experience efficiently, to stop pushing toward a numerical or item-driven goal and actively build a connection, a friendship with someone else. In every MMORPG I play, I say hello when someone runs past me. Because of this, it will probably take me years to achieve the best gear while others, it may take months because I'm willing to spend the time being inefficient and talking to people instead of grinding constantly. If you want the unique connection that only MMORPGs can provide, you've got to understand that that comes at the price of efficiency. Spending time talking to other players isn't convenient as far as experience or item farming is concerned, but convenience as we already know, kills adventure. If after those three points you're thinking, where's my proof? What exact proof do I have that players miss the old MMORPG spark, the old magic only achieved by lack of convenience and player interaction? Well, old school RuneScape, a build of the game from 2007 with player voted updates hit more than 100,000 active players recently, with millions of accounts made in total. WoW Classic is being hyped no end. An early game build removing years of updates and conveniences, pulling in audience of over 100,000 Twitch viewers. EverQuest 1, from 1999. Early builds of the core game are alive and well, with hundreds of people still selling player to player in the market tunnel and thousands of active players. I personally have recently started playing on the Mangler progression server with none of the 20 years worth of expansions and it's alive and well. Private servers running the first or second builds and patches of many games still pull in thousands of pounds a month providing players with that authentic retro experience. There is a market there crying out for the magic to come back. To sum up, in the immortal words of Radchek from Starship Troopers, something given has no value. Whichever MMORPG you choose will not 
give you adventure or magic or fellowships or friendships. It will simply provide you with the tools needed to go and take that. That old MMORPG you're fondly remembering from your youth, and we all have one. Those days gone by with friends, adventuring and exploring. They didn't happen because the game gave you everything. Quite the opposite. They happened because the game gave you nothing and you took everything. You earned your adventure. You put the effort in to meet up with players, explore unusual mechanics, make sense of this complex world, and find ways to overcome the inconvenience. That was your adventure. You have, with any game, the interface to speak to others, the ability to walk off the beaten path and see what's over that mountain, the self-discipline to not Wikipedia every single thing and ask other players, how do I do this? But simply, you as a player may not be forced to, but you do have the freedom to say, I'm going to do this the hard way, because that's more rewarding. If we want MMORPGs to return to the glory they were once at, we need to remove the convenience that is holding the adventure back, and we need to put personal time and effort into connecting with people going on this adventure with us. If you're an MMORPG fan and want to game together, please come and join me on Twitch. I play a huge variety of MMORPGs, and I would love to meet all of you in-game, whatever game that may be. I'm usually streaming five nights a week, over at twitch.tv forward slash Josh Strife Hayes. Thank you very much for watching and for your time. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave a comment below or ask me on Twitch. I'll try to get back to all of them. Have a great day, and I hope to see you in game sometime.